I've seen properties described before as Python's most powerful decorator, and I'm inclined to agree. It is a shortcut to a very advanced part of Python that allows you to get incredibly creative with how you work with class attributes. For example, it's probably the closest you can realistically get to private variables and protected variables with established patterns. It's also capable of allowing you to set computed attributes that don't have to be manually set up every time, as well as allowing you to set custom logic when setting an attribute, including validating it. So in this video, we're gonna be covering some of the use cases for properties. We're gonna be seeing how they're used. But we're also gonna be taking a look at how they work and the insides of properties, at least as far as pure Python equivalents are concerned. Of course, if you find this video helpful at any point, then consider leaving a like to let me know and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. But with all that out of the way, let's get the complete lowdown on properties in Python. There are a few different use cases for properties and I'm going to show you the two most common uh, today. So the first is managing private attributes, similarly to how you would do in maybe C or C Sharp, where you'd have a private attribute and then you would have a getter and a setter uh, method to then actually fetch or set the value. Uh, we could just do that in properties in Python. So we can do class say profile. And of course, we're going to do my favorite example, uh, self, uh, and then you have name, string, age, oh my God, age, int. And then we'll have jobs. I'll just have job string. I can't be asked to do anything more than that. Uh, self.name uh, equals name, self.job equals job and then we're going to have self dot underscore age down here which is a private attribute i'm doing air quotes you can't see that but i am uh, so this is not intended to be accessed by the user at all but we can specify a property which will actually fetch this uh, variable and if you were to do something like this it would give you a read only attribute of age so people could if they knew what they were doing still access underscore age if they wanted to but if you wanted to set an interface where you say okay we don't want the age to change we just want to set it as a read-only attribute you could do so with this uh, once you defined an attribute as a property you can also use uh, this to create setters and deleters so a setter is done by the name of the function and then dot setter and then you have to have the, the name of the method the same as the name of the property. Otherwise, it will complain at you saying that uh, all the type system just won't know what to do. I'm not really sure why that happens because in normal Python, that's not how things tend to work. But I'm guessing because properties are implemented in C, it does some weird fancy stuff probably. Uh, but you could just use this to set the value if you wanted, or you could use it as a validator. So you could say, if value is less than zero, then raise age cannot be negative, like that. And then if this condition passes, you then set the value to underscore age. So now you've set an age that cannot be set to less than zero. Unless, of course, you set the age, uh, the dunder age up here. But again, intended interfaces and all that. Uh, you then also have a, a deleter, which I've actually never used in the real world, personally. But this is called if you were to call del on an attribute. Um, so if I just do this, for example. And I'll explain it once I've got the example code uh, on here. So if you do if name equals main, and then we do all this, it kind of knows what I want to do. I am 25, not 22, though. Uh, so we create a profile uh, with my name, my age, and my profession. We then print my age here. We then set my age to 23. Let's say, let's, let's set that to 30. And then print that. And then we del the age and then we print that. So this is what I meant with uh, with the deleter. It's called whatever you call del on the property. And if you were to run that, uh, that was planning stuff, ignore that. <laughs> uh, we can see that the age uh, no longer exists. Uh, because we've deleted the property um, from this. I, weirdly enough, you actually get this error saying profile object is no attribute underscore age. Did you mean age? That's what I tried. Uh, so yeah, that's a weird behavior. Um, I'm not sure how commonly people really use that. Uh, you can change this to do whatever you want though. So you can say self.age equals zero if you wanted to. And now if I were to print that, when you delete the age, it sets it to zero. So this may be useful if you had things that could be reset or unset, or if you had maybe something in a database, if you're using properties to run an ORM, then you could use Dell to delete a record, for example, 
Uh, there are a few use cases. I've never really used deleters in the real world though. The other use case for properties is to use them as replacements for methods if the particular calculation or computation would have no input arguments. Uh, so if we come to this file here, we can do import date time as DT. And if we set a slightly different kind of profile, uh, we have def init self, thanks, uh, name string. And then we set the birth date rather than the age. Uh, yeah, birth date equals dt.date. And we set self.name equals name and then self.birthday equals birthday. And then we have a property down here that can calculate the age. And this would be self and it will return an int. And this calculation would be that divided by 365. And now we have a property that can be accessed just like a normal attribute, but that isn't set. It's taking information from elsewhere and performing a computation on it. So if we do if name equals main and then do that, let's set it to my actual birthday, 1998, September the 22nd. If we print uh, calc age, we can see that the age comes out as 25, which is accurate, but we haven't got any private properties around. We don't even call this as a method. We just you know, assume that it's an attribute, but this is then uh, computing the value without having to store it elsewhere, which is really nice for lazy evaluations. It's also nice if you wanted to do something dynamically. So if I were to change the birth date for whatever reason, to say 2000, it would then say that my age would be 23 instead. So those are the two main use cases for properties. There are probably others, um, but those are a bit more specific. I want to cover cached property very quickly while I'm here. I have talked about it in more detail in a different video, but it's, it fits here. So I'm going to do it now. Uh, so we could do from funk to all oh, that was bad. I misspelled that in a very specific way and I'm going to have to blur that out. <laughs> from funk tools import cache property. I'm sorry. Uh, and then if we say, say a print calculating age and we do cached property here. Now we are caching the property. And if we were to call this more than once, uh, we would see that the age is only calculated once because much like if you were to use uh, from font dot cache on a method or a function, uh, then uh, this will cache the result of the computation uh, in a dictionary somewhere. I'm actually not sure where it stores it. It's some sort of global state out in the middle of nowhere. And then when it's called, it will see, okay, I've run this before. I will then, um, I will then output it. What's important to note is that it works in exactly the same way. And as such can't be used in exactly the same ways as normal caches. Um, so it takes all the input arguments and then if the function name, or in this case, the property name and all the input arguments match what's already in the cache, then it will return the same output. So same inputs, same output, deterministic. With functions and methods, you can of course provide other inputs. And then if any of those inputs are different, the output will be recalculated. With a cached property, you can only pass objects. The object instance is the only thing that's passed into it. And the cache property uh, decorator does not take this into account. It does not more comprehensively track the object state. It will just make sure that the object is the same. You might be able, oh, I didn't actually try this. I've just thought you might be able to change this with a Dunder EQ, perhaps. I don't know, let me know if you, if you, if you want to try that. Uh, but if I were to change the birthday up here, for example, so if I were to change this um, back to 1998, it would, Oh, hang on, because I'm, I'm creating a, a new instance that I need to do uh, dot birth ooh, date equals 1998 like that. And you can see, even though we've changed the birthday, it's now outputting the incorrect information because it's cached self and it's not tracking the rest of the information. It's not tracking the state of the instance. So that's all there really is to know about properties. As I mentioned in the intro, the video is not done yet. If you're not interested in the implementation, you could just drop out now if you want, but I'm going to be showing you approximately how it's implemented.
Uh, so some caveats, properties are actually implemented in C, so you can't get exactly the same behavior out of it. What I'm about to show you is an emulated version that is in the Python documentation. What I've done is I've type hinted it and I fixed it because the implementation of the docs doesn't actually work. I don't know if it's a direct emulation of how C works and it just doesn't work the same if you do it in Python. Uh, but here it is, Ooh, here it is, there we go. So yeah, it's all very strongly type hinted. And the properties, as you can see, are descriptors, everyone's favorite topic. If you don't know what descriptors are, or if you're confused by them, I did do a video a few weeks ago talking about descriptors. That will be in the cards. Uh, I also did a video on generics very recently as well. That will be in the cards as well. There's all sorts of videos going on. Uh, so I'll link that. If you're confused about how that works, I'm not gonna go over that here. But essentially a property takes, or it can take uh, a getter, a setter, and a deleter in its constructor. And that's because properties um, are not only decorators, but can also be used, um, if I go back here, uh, they can also be used uh, like this. So we could pass the getter, the setter, and, then, and the, uh, the deleter in like that. So that supports that. If you use it as a decorator, the, the initial argument would just be this fget here. Uh, and that takes the object and the return value, uh, as I've called it, T. Maybe it would be better to have called that R, but never mind. Uh, it also takes an optional doc string, um, although it will automatically get the doc string if needed. So if you don't pass your own doc string, it will get the doc string from the fget and then set its own doc string to that doc string. From here, it then uses this dunder set name to then set uh, the name of the attribute that is used later. And this dunder get, I've added a few overloads. So if object is none, then we are calling the descriptor on a class and we don't really want to do anything special. So we just return ourself. So we're actually returning the property object uh, back out. So if I were to do, um, say, uh, pro print profile.age like that, and then uh, print script, you'd see we get the property object back out. And that's because we don't really want to do any calculations um, because there are a number of side effects we're doing stuff with that. So we just simply return self. Uh, otherwise, we check to make sure that fget is set, which is not a guarantee. So we just raise an attribute error if not. And if it is set, then we just call the getter function with the object. Uh, the dunder set works very similarly. We take an object and we take a value. If the setter isn't set, raise a, a thing. Otherwise, we call the setter. And then the deleter, again, exactly the same thing, except we just take the object. And then these uh, methods down here are similar to these methods here. So age.setter and age.deleter. So as they're decorators, they simply just take a function. Uh, so in this case, the fget, and that would be this. Well, this would be the f set. So if I go to the setter one, I'm going to close that because I keep clicking on that. Uh, it takes an f set, and then we just set the self dot f set equals f set. Uh, this is actually what I had to change in the in the Python documentation. It actually, creates a new property instance, and then sets everything up, and then returns that new instance. But if you were to run it in the script, it actually breaks because then it doesn't understand what the getter and the deleter do. It's, yeah, it's weird. So that's the bit I had to fix. Um, but this is also a lot simpler. As you can see, we just do the same with the, the getter and the, and the, and the, uh, and the deleter. And now if we were to change this example to use our property. So from import, import property. So you change property up here. You would then have to change this to be like a dunder and then this to be a dunder. So similar to how single dispatch and multi-dispatch would work. And now you'll see that it works in exactly the same way. So we then uh, get the age, we then set the age, we can delete the age or set it back to zero. And then we return our impl.property object down here. And everything is fully type hinted. Uh, so this will understand it's a literal 30. This does actually work if it's a property. It actually understands that it is a property even, I've just realized. That's really strange. There must be something with like the way the setter and the deleter are defined that, that, that actually figures it out. But the type hints are all the same as the property would be. So it will re uh, register this is an age. It will register that this is a property. Or oh, sorry, it will register this is an integer, not an age. 
No, and everything works hunky dory. So that is a complete guide to properties, including just normal properties, cash properties, and custom properties. Let me know in the comments if you've used properties outside of the two use cases that I've shown here. I imagine a number of you have, and it'd be really interesting to hear all the cool ways that you've used them. So make sure to leave something down below. If you're interested in other ways that Python can be awesome, I have an entire series dedicated to it, conveniently named Python is Awesome. That'll be in the end cards if you want to watch that. But I'll see you in the next video for whatever we do next.